Herbert Marcuse, German, Ma Zee, July 19, 1898 to July 29, 1979, was a German-American philosopher, sociologist, and political theorist associated with the Frankfurt School of Critical Theory. Born in Berlin, Marcuse studied at the universities of Berlin and then at Freiburg, where he received his PhD. He was a prominent figure in the Frankfurt-based Institute for Social Research, what later became known as the Frankfurt School. He was married to Sophie Wertheim (1924–1951), Ing Newman (1955–1973), and Erika Scherever (1976–1979). In his written works, he criticized capitalism, modern technology, historical materialism, and entertainment culture, arguing that they represent new forms of social control. Between 1943 and 1950, Marcuse worked in U.S. government service for the Office of Strategic Services, predecessor of the Central Intelligence Agency, where he criticized the ideology of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in the book Soviet Marxism: A Critical Analysis, 1958. After his studies, in the 1960s and the 1970s he became known as the preeminent theorist of the New Left and the student movements of West Germany, France, and the United States. Some consider him the father of the New Left. His best known works are Eros and Civilization 1955 and One Dimensional Man 1964. His Marxist scholarship inspired many radical intellectuals and political activists in the 1960s and 1970s, both in the United States and internationally. He viewed the integration of Eros and Logos to be the liberation of society. Biography Early life Herbert Marcuse was born July 19, 1898, in Berlin, to Karl Marcuse and Gertrude Kreslowski. His family was Jewish. In 1916 he was drafted into the German army, but only worked in horse stables in Berlin during World War I. He then became a member of a soldiers' council that participated in the aborted socialist Spartacist uprising. He completed his Ph.D. thesis at the University of Freiburg in 1922 on the German Kunstleroman after which he moved back to Berlin, where he worked in publishing. In 1924 he married Sophie Wertheim, a mathematician. He returned to Freiburg in 1928 to study with Edmund Husserl and write a habilitation with Martin Heidegger, which was published in 1932 as Hegel's Ontology and the Theory of Historicity Hegel's Ontology und die Theorie der Geschichtlichkeit. This study was written in the context of the Hegel Renaissance that was taking place in Europe with an emphasis on Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's ontology of life and history, idealist theory of spirit and dialectic. With his academic career blocked by the rise of the Third Reich, in 1933 Marcuse joined the Institute for Social Research, popularly known as the Frankfurt School, in 1932. He went almost at once into exile with them, first briefly in Geneva, then in the United States. Unlike some others, Marcuse did not return to Germany after the war, and when he visited Frankfurt in 1956, the young Jürgen Habermas was surprised to discover that he was a key member of the Institute. In 1933, Marcuse published his first major review, of Karl Marx's Economic and Philosophic Manuscripts of 1844. In this review, Marcuse revised the interpretation of Marxism, from the standpoint of the works of the early Marx. While a member of the Institute of Social Research, Marcuse developed a model for critical social theory, created a theory of the new stage of state and monopoly capitalism, described the relationships between philosophy, social theory, and cultural criticism, and provided an analysis and critique of German fascism. Marcuse worked closely with critical theorists while at the Institute. Topic emigration to the United States After emigrating from Germany in 1933, Marcuse immigrated to the United States in 1934, where he became a citizen in 1940. Although he never returned to Germany to live, he remained one of the major theorists associated with the Frankfurt School, along with Max Horkheimer and Theodor W. Adorno, among others. In 1940 he published Reason and Revolution, a dialectical work studying G. W. F. Hegel and Karl Marx. Topic World War II During World War II, Marcuse first worked for the U.S. Office of War Information OWI on anti-Nazi propaganda projects. In 1943, he transferred to the Research and Analysis Branch of the Office of Strategic Services the precursor to the Central Intelligence Agency. 
Directed by the Harvard historian William L. Langer, the research and analysis branch was in fact the biggest American research institution in the first half of the 20th century. At its zenith between 1943 and 1945, it comprised over 1,200 employees, 400 of whom were stationed abroad. In many respects, it was the site where post-World War II American social science was born, with protégés of some of the most esteemed American university professors, as well as a large contingent of European intellectual émigrés, in its ranks. These men comprised the theoretical brain trust of the American war machine, which, according to its founder, William J. Donovan, would function as a final clearinghouse for the secret services, that is, as a structure that, although not engaged in determining war strategy or tactics, would be able to assemble, organize, analyze, and filter the immense flow of military information directed toward Washington, thanks to the unique capacity of the specialists on hand to interpret the relevant sources. In March 1943, Marcuse joined his fellow Frankfurt school scholar Franz Neumann in R&A's Central European section as senior analyst and rapidly established himself as the leading analyst on Germany. After the dissolution of the OSS in 1945, Marcuse was employed by the U.S. Department of State as head of the Central European section, retiring after the death of his first wife in 1951. Topic Post-war In 1952, Marcuse began a teaching career as a political theorist, first at Columbia University, then at Harvard University. Marcuse worked at Brandeis University from 1958 to 1965, then at the University of California San Diego until his retirement. It was during his time at Brandeis University that he wrote his most famous work, One Dimensional Man 1964. Marcuse was a friend and collaborator of the political sociologist Barrington Moore Jr. and of the political philosopher Robert Paul Wolfe, and also a friend of the Columbia University sociology professor C. Wright Mills, one of the founders of the New Left Movement. In his introduction to One Dimensional Man, Marcuse wrote, I should like to emphasize the vital importance of the work of C. Wright Mills. In the post-war period, Marcuse rejected the theory of class struggle and the Marxist concern with labor, instead claiming, according to Leszek Kolakowski, that since all questions of material existence have been solved, moral commands and prohibitions are no longer relevant, he regarded the realization of man's erotic nature as the true liberation of humanity, which inspired the utopias of Jerry Rubin and others. Marcuse's critiques of capitalist society especially his 1955 synthesis of Marx and Sigmund Freud, Eros and Civilization, and his 1964 book One Dimensional Man resonated with the concerns of the student movement in the 1960s. Because of his willingness to speak at student protests and his essay Repressive Tolerance 1965, Marcuse soon became known in the media as father of the new left. Contending that the students of the 60s were not waiting for the publication of his work to act, Marcuse brushed the media's branding of him as father of the new left, aside lightly, saying, it would have been better to call me not the father, but the grandfather, of the new left. His work heavily influenced intellectual discourse on popular culture and scholarly popular culture studies. He had many speaking engagements in the U.S. and Western Bloc in the late 1960s and 1970s. He became a close friend and inspirer of the French philosopher André Gors. Marcuse defended the arrested East German dissident Rudolf Barrow, author of Die Alternative, Zur Kritik des Real Existierenden Sozialismus Trans, The Alternative in Eastern Europe, discussing in a 1979 essay Barrow's theories of change from within. Topic: The New Left and Radical Politics. Many radical scholars and activists were influenced by Marcuse, such as Norman O. Brown, Angela Davis, Captain Charles J. Moore, Kathy Acker, Abby Hoffman, Rudy Dutchke, and Robert M. Young. See the list of scholars and activists linked below. Among those who critiqued him from the left were Marxist humanist Raya Dunayevskaya, fellow German emigre Paul Matic, both of whom subjected one dimensional man to a Marxist critique, and Noam Chomsky, who knew and liked Marcuse, but thought very little of his work. Marcuse's 1965 essay, Repressive Tolerance, in which he claimed capitalist democracies can have totalitarian aspects, has been criticized by conservatives. Marcuse argues that genuine tolerance does not permit support for repression, since doing so ensures that marginalized voices will remain unheard. He characterizes tolerance of repressive speech as inauthentic. Instead, he advocates a form of tolerance that is intolerant of repressive namely right-wing political movements 
liberating tolerance, then, would mean intolerance against movements from the right and toleration of movements from the left. Surely, no government can be expected to foster its own subversion, but in a democracy such a right is vested in the people i.e. in the majority of the people. This means that the ways should not be blocked on which a subversive majority could develop, and if they are blocked by organized repression and indoctrination, their reopening may require apparently undemocratic means. They would include the withdrawal of toleration of speech and assembly from groups and movements that promote aggressive policies, armament, chauvinism, discrimination on the grounds of race and religion, or that oppose the extension of public services, social security, medical care, etc. Marcuse later expressed his radical ideas through three pieces of writing. He wrote an essay on liberation in 1969, in which he celebrated liberation movements such as those in Vietnam, which inspired many radicals. In 1972 he wrote Counterrevolution and Revolt, which argues that the hopes of the 1960s were facing a counterrevolution from the right. After Brandeis denied the renewal of his teaching contract in 1965, Marcuse taught at the University of California San Diego until his retirement and devoted the rest of his life to teaching, writing and giving lectures around the world. His efforts brought him attention from the media, which claimed that he openly advocated violence, although he often clarified that only violence of defense could be appropriate, not violence of aggression. He continued to promote Marxian theory, with some of his students helping to spread his ideas. He published his final work The Aesthetic Dimension in 1979 on the role of art in the process of what he termed emancipation from bourgeois society. Topic. Marriages Marcuse married three times. His first wife was mathematician Sophie Wertheim (1901–1951), with whom he had a son, Peter, born 1928. Herbert's second marriage was to Ing Newman (1910–1973), the widow of his close friend Franz Newman (1900–1954). His third wife was Erika Scherever (1938–1988), a former graduate student and 40 years his junior, whom he married in 1976. His son Peter Marcuse is Professor Emeritus of Urban Planning at Columbia University. His granddaughter is the novelist Irene Marcuse and his grandson, Harold Marcuse, is a professor of history at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Topic. Death On July 29, 1979, ten days after his 81st birthday, Marcuse died after suffering a stroke during a visit to Germany. He had spoken at the Frankfurt Romerbergespräch, and was on his way to the Max Planck Institute for the Study of the Scientific Technical World in Starnberg, on invitation from second-generation Frankfurt school theorist Jürgen Habermas. In 2003, after his ashes were rediscovered in the United States, they were buried in the Dorotheenstädtischer Cemetery in Berlin. Topic. Philosophy and views Marcuse's famous concept repressive desublimation refers to his argument that post-war mass culture, with its profusion of sexual provocations, serves to reinforce political repression. If people are preoccupied with inauthentic sexual stimulation, their political energy will be desublimated. Instead of acting constructively to change the world, they remain repressed and uncritical. Marcuse advanced the pre-war thinking of critical theory toward a critical account of the one-dimensional nature of bourgeois life in Europe and America. His thinking could, therefore, also be considered an advance of the concerns of earlier liberal critics such as David Reisman. Much of Marcuse's philosophy was centered around the belief that Eros had to integrate with Logos in order to strive. Marcuse defended Plato's argument that while Eros was constructive, Logos was superior and would eventually absorb it. In One Dimensional Man, he argued that Logos would also liberate one's gratification. Two aspects of Marcuse's work are of particular importance. First, his use of language more familiar from the critique of Soviet or Nazi regimes to characterize developments in the advanced industrial world, and second, his grounding of critical theory in a particular use of psychoanalytic thought. Both of these features of his thinking have often been misunderstood and have given rise to critiques of his work that miss the point of his targets. Topic. Marcuse's early Heideggerian Marxism 
During his years in Freiburg, Marcuse wrote a series of essays that explored the possibility of synthesizing Marxism and Heidegger's fundamental ontology, as begun in the latter's work Being and Time This early interest in Heidegger followed Marcuse's demand for "...concrete philosophy," which, he declared in 1928, "...concerns itself with the truth of contemporaneous human existence." These words were directed against the neo-Kantianism of the mainstream, and against both the revisionist and orthodox Marxist alternatives, in which the subjectivity of the individual played little role. Though Marcuse quickly distanced himself from Heidegger following Heidegger's endorsement of Nazism, it has been suggested by thinkers such as Jürgen Habermas that an understanding of Marcuse's later thinking demands an appreciation of his early Heideggerian influence. Marcuse and capitalism Marcuse's analysis of capitalism derives partially from one of Karl Marx's main concepts, objectification, which under capitalism becomes alienation. Marx believed that capitalism was exploiting humans, that by producing objects of a certain character, laborers became alienated and this ultimately dehumanized them into functional objects themselves. Marcuse took this belief and expanded it. He argued that capitalism and industrialization pushed laborers so hard that they began to see themselves as extensions of the objects they were producing. At the beginning of One Dimensional Man Marcuse writes, "...the people recognize themselves in their commodities, they find their soul in their automobile, hi-fi set, split-level home, kitchen equipment." Meaning that under capitalism in consumer society, humans become extensions of the commodities that they buy, thus making commodities extensions of people's minds and bodies. Affluent mass technological societies, he argues, are totally controlled and manipulated. In societies based upon mass production and mass distribution, the individual worker has become merely a consumer of its commodities and entire commodified way of life. Modern capitalism has created false needs and false consciousness geared to consumption of commodities, it locks one-dimensional man into the one-dimensional society which produced the need for people to recognize themselves in their commodities, the very mechanism that ties the individual to his society has changed and social control is anchored in the new needs which it has produced. Most important of all, the pressure of consumerism has led to the total integration of the working class into the capitalist system. Its political parties and trade unions have become thoroughly bureaucratized and the power of negative thinking or critical reflection has rapidly declined. The working class is no longer a potentially subversive force capable of bringing about revolutionary change. As a result, rather than looking to the workers as the revolutionary vanguard, Marcuse put his faith in an alliance between radical intellectuals and those groups not yet integrated into one-dimensional society, the socially marginalized, the substratum of the outcasts and outsiders, the exploited and persecuted of other ethnicities and other colors, the unemployed and the unemployable. These were the people whose standards of living demanded the ending of intolerable conditions and institutions and whose resistance to one-dimensional society would not be diverted by the system. Their opposition was revolutionary even if their consciousness was not. Criticism <coughs> 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 Leszek Kolakowski described Marcuse's views as essentially anti-Marxist, in that they ignored Marx's critique of Hegel and discarded the historical theory of class struggle entirely in favor of an inverted Freudian reading of human history where all social rules could and should be discarded to create a new world of happiness. Kolakowski concluded that Marcuse's ideal society is to be ruled despotically by an enlightened group who have realized in themselves the unity of logos and eros, and thrown off the vexatious authority of logic, mathematics, and the empirical sciences." The philosopher Alasdair MacIntyre asserted that almost all of Marcuse's key positions are false and that his generalizations were based upon the total absence of any account of contemporary social structure. Featherstone criticized his portrayal of modern consumerism, it falsely assumed that consumers were completely passive, in critically responding to corporate advertising. <laughs> Legacy Herbert Marcuse appealed to students of the New Left through his emphasis on the power of critical thought and his vision of total human emancipation and a non-repressive civilization. He supported students he felt were subject to the pressures of a commodifying system, and has been regarded as an inspirational intellectual leader. 
He is also considered among the most influential of the Frankfurt School critical theorists on North American culture, due to his studies on student and counter-cultural movements on the 1960s. The legacy of the 1960s, of which Marcuse was a vital part, lives on, and the great refusal is still practiced by oppositional groups and individuals who refuse to conform to the existing systems of oppression and domination. Wolf von Laer, in a podcast titled Campus Speech and the Libertarian Student Movement, cites the influence of Marcuse as an unacknowledged source for the disruptive tactics of the New Left on today's campuses. Bibliography Bookschegel's Ontology and Theory of Historicity 1932, originally written in German, English 1987. Studie über Autorität und Familie 1936, in German, republished 1987, 2005. Marcuse wrote just over 100 pages in this 900-page study. Reason and Revolution, Hegel and the Rise of Social Theory 1941. ISBN 978-1-57392-718-5 Eros and Civilization, A Philosophical Inquiry into Freud 1955. ISBN 978-0-415-18663-6 Soviet Marxism, A Critical Analysis 1958. One Dimensional Man, Studies in the Ideology of Advanced Industrial Society 1964. A Critique of Pure Tolerance 1965 essay, Repressive Tolerance, with additional essays by Robert Paul Wolfe and Barrington Moore, Jr. Negations, Essays in Critical Theory 1968. An Essay on Liberation 1969. Five Lectures 1969. Counterrevolution and Revolt 1972 ISBN 9780870153399 The Aesthetic Dimension Toward a Critique of Marxist Aesthetics 1978 ISBN 9780870151933 Essays Repressive Tolerance 1965 Liberation 1969 On the Problem of the Dialectic 1976 Proto-socialism and late capitalism: toward a theoretical synthesis based on Barrow's analysis, 1980. Topic. See also. After Marcuse, Freudu Marxism. List of people from Berlin. Topic. References. Topic. Further reading John Abromit and W. Mark Cobb, eds. 2004 Herbert Marcuse, A Critical Reader, New York, London, Routledge. Harold Bleich 1977 The Philosophy of Herbert Marcuse, Washington, University Press of America. Paul Brines 1970 Critical Interruptions, New Left Perspectives on Herbert Marcuse, New York, Herder and Herder. C. Fred Alford 1985, Science and Revenge of Nature, Marcuse and Habermas, Gainesville, University of Florida Press. Andrew Feenberg and William Lice 2007, The Essential Marcuse, Selected Writings of Philosopher and Social Critic Herbert Marcuse, Boston, Beacon Press. Douglas Kellner 1984. Herbert Marcuse and the Crisis of Marxism. London, Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-520-05295-6. Andrew T. Lamas, Todd Wolfson, and Peter N. Funk, eds. 2017. The Great Refusal, Herbert Marcuse and Contemporary Social Movements. Philadelphia, Temple University Press, 2017. Raphael Ladani, 2013, ed. Secret Reports on Nazi Germany. The Frankfurt School Contribution to the War Effort by Franz Neumann, Herbert Marcuse and Otto Kirchheimer. Princeton University Press. Herbert Marcuse 1998, Technology, War and Fascism, London, Routledge. Paul Matic 1972, Critique of Marcuse, One-Dimensional Man in Class Society Merlin Press Alain Martineau 1986. Herbert Marcuse's Utopia, Harvest House, Montreal. J. Michael Tilley 2011. Herbert Marcuse, Social Critique, Haker and Kierkegaardian Individualism in Kierkegaard's Influence on Social-Political Thought edited by John Stewart. 
Alessio Vivas 1971. Contra Marcuse, Arlington House, New Rochelle. ISBN 0-87000-112-4 Anthony Elliott and Larry Ray 2003, Key Contemporary Social Theorists. Charles Lemert 2010, Social Theory, The Multicultural and Classic Readings. Noel Parker and Stuart Sim 1997, A to Z Guide to Modern Social and Political Theorists Douglas Mann 2008. A Survey of Modern Social Theory. Topic external links Comprehensive official Herbert Marcuse website, by one of Marcuse's grandsons, with full bibliographies of primary and secondary works, and full texts of many important works International Herbert Marcuse Society website Herbert Marcuse online archive at the Marxists Internet Archive Herbert Marcuse Archive, by Herbert Marcuse Association Marcuse, professor behind 1960s rebellion at the Wayback Machine archived December 10, 2004 from worldsocialism.org Illuminations, The Critical Theory Project Detailed Biography and Essays, by Douglas Kellner. Douglas Kellner, Herbert Marcuse Bernard Stiegler, Spirit, Capitalism, and Superego Herbert Marcuse Biography Indonesian at Aprilins.com Azurmendi, J. 1969, Pencilaria Ada Aragina Jakin, 35-3-16. Goodbye Comrade M. Obituary of Marcuse by David Widgery, Socialist Review, September 1979, 